Welcome back to another episode of It's Empty. Today, I'm here at Suspension Secrets. We are gonna get more negative camber on the M240, ready to go back to the Nürburgring for the big wing. Let's do it. It's already a proper weapon. And it's planted, yeah? It's planted, so it's, uh, it does the job well. It's very good. The brake suspension, you can add maybe a bit of more camber, but it was actually quite all right. So it's now neutral base, which, I, uh, which is good for average driver, or like a bit beginner, or even like, who wants to be safe? I would prefer maybe like really more turn in, but now this was already already good. Now I want to do. Okay, cool. Given this video a watch a load of times, and I know exactly what we need to do. So we need to have a look at this car, check over the setup, give it a bit more camber at the rear, probably at the front as well. So we've got some components that we've made. Let's get downstairs. Let's get this car set up and get it handling properly. So Matt, lovely to meet you. You too. Nice place here. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Of course. You've watched the video. Yep. What do you think to the 240? Really cool build. Um, obviously, from Misha's words, there he wants more camber and he wants it to have a bit more turning response and like get on the nose into the corner by the sounds of it. So I don't want to sit with him again. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I get that. No. Not really, I will. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have a look at the car as is. We'll get on the yeah. ramp, look through what you've got fitted. And um, we've got these bits out in preparation because okay. you wanted more camber. This yeah. is front axle camber and rear axle camber right here. So yeah. this is how we can achieve it if we need to. Um, you might already have bits on the car that can achieve it. So okay. these are just ready to rock if we need them. Um, and then we can put them on if we need to put them on. Excellent. So Matt, we've got it in. Yep. What's, what can you analyze just by looking at it? Obviously, I mean, you can probably see we've got quite a bit of negative camber on the front. Yep. I mean, you've had a quick peek under there. Yep. We've got the adjustable plates already. Yep. So do you want to just talk us through what your thoughts are yeah, and what, sure. what, what, so what you're thinking? You've got the club sport coilovers. So yep. we, we can't fit our camber plates to these shots. They, okay. already, they already come with them, basically. Okay, yeah. um, so there's no need for ours on there at no. the front. And you can see they are at maximum, aren't they? They're fully maxed yeah, out, yeah. Maxed yeah. So, out, but yeah. your front camber looks, at the minute, like you've got a good amount on there. Probably like okay. three, three and a half degrees by yeah. eye, but we'll yeah. have to measure it soon. Well, I think Misha was saying he wants more turning, doesn't he? Yeah, exactly. So, so looking at the car. How can we achieve that? So the biggest issue I'd say, so one is your rear camber looks almost vertical. So we need to get more rear camber okay. on there, definitely to help with rear rotation. But yeah. the biggest thing I've noticed just by looking is your rake angle. So okay. when you're looking at the side of your car, your sill is basically flat. If not, the front goes slightly uphill. Okay. That's the opposite of what we want to be looking for in okay. this car to get it working. So yes. we want to bring that nose down if we can, or the back up to achieve that rake angle. And that'll give it like nose down attitude. Yeah. So as you're coming into the brakes, the chassis is already pitched forward onto the nose, giving more load onto the front tire and it will get it turned in nicer. So Proper technical, yeah. isn't it? This guy like pitched down. Yeah, well, yeah, right. <laughs> That's how you get these chassis like really switched on. So that's right, yeah. um, that'll help a lot and that'll give him that turning that he's looking for. Yeah. Um, and then we'll give it the grip to lean onto with the camber arms at the back. Excellent. So yeah. what's the next process now then, Matt? We'll get it in the air. We'll have a full look underneath the car. Yeah. Just see what you're working with at the minute. Then we'll drop it onto the trays. We'll get it all measured up. We'll see what cameras are definitely on there. We'll measure them. Um, we'll put the strings on. We'll see what the toe is on the car currently. It's nice to know what you've got now as a yeah. package. Just so um, you can work from that. Though, yeah, yeah, and we'll measure your rake angle, ride heights, and then we'll make a plan. Excellent. Wicked, let's do it. Awesome. Cool. So that's the old camber arm. So Alex, do you want to tell us a little bit about the difference? Obviously they look massively yeah, so different. Massive difference to begin with. And then you've got here, 
you've got rubber bushes yep. from both ends, yep. whereas these are completely solid rose joints, they yeah. won't move or flex. Okay. And then obviously the big difference is the adjuster the right here, yep. that's where you get your like massive camera adjustment, a lot more than standard. Okay, so where this is obviously fixed, yeah. this you can adjust and obviously these joints are a lot a lot more firmer because so these are rubber aren't they yeah so they'll flex under load so if you're going around the corner they'll flex and they'll change the geometry slightly yeah whereas the geometry will always be the same with these excellent right let's get them on so alex one of the techs here has done the job so do you want to tell him what we've had then uh, sure Matt? so we've got to look over the car what it needs so all we think you need to add to the package is the rear camera arms. Okay. And um, we've also fit a set of rear drop links on the car as well because the ones that yeah. were on there were too long and it touching was touching a little. Yeah, bit. the anti robot was touching the rear camera yeah, arm. So don't want that. Fit shorter ones just to separate the two. Yeah. And um, just give a bit of clearance. So yeah, we just we've loaded the nose 10 mil from where it was. Yeah. Um, we're going to add some rear camera, which will naturally drop the back down a bit more as well. But we're also going to lower it by five mil just yeah. to get the rake angle exactly where we want yeah. it. Yeah. And then we're going to get this car set up. So yeah, we've been through the setup already. Toes a bit all over the place, um, camera settings are nowhere near enough on the back, and yeah. um, that's why we need that hardware yeah. in there to get the rear camera where we want it. So we're going to get it all set up now. Excellent. Do you think we can go any lower on the front, or is that enough? Because I have rolled these arches Yeah, out. We, we could. Um, I don't want to go too low when we start smacking it to pieces, um, but yeah. we might go down a touch more yet. Yeah, so do you think we'll that do... will scrub, though, especially when Misha, the mm. nut to drive? Well, well, there's one way to find out, which is we'll, we'll take it down the lanes and, and push okay. it and see what happens. Okay. Um, but there's a big arch gap there, quite a stiff spring. So yeah. it shouldn't touch at this height. Okay, perfect. Let's get the geo done on the 240 now. Yeah. Cool. We just finished up the setup now. So we've got the rear camera arms installed, rear drop links installed, and we've got all the cameras set, ride height set that we're happy with, the rake angles also set. So the, the final piece of the puzzle now is to get the toe angles all set because that's the first thing you feel, so it's the last thing we set. So we've just got the string and line kit on now, so we use a motorsport string and line kit for all of our alignments. And this basically means that we calibrate the kit to the car every time, so our readings are always very accurate. We're not relying on a calibration of an electronic piece of equipment, we're measuring it physically to the chassis, making sure that this string is perfectly parallel with the centre line of the car. Then we're taking our measurements inboard of that to the wheel to calculate the toe angle. So we're just finishing up now with the toe, giving it some track settings to get more grip at the back. So more on throttle traction, especially because this is mapped and running more power. And then the front end, just for Misha's words effectively, he wanted more turning response. So we've towed up that front axle so that when that steering wheel is turned, it has an immediate direct angle change effectively. So you basically, when you're turning that wheel, the car is gonna turn faster and it's gonna be more responsive for the driver. So it's gonna give that exact request that Misha gave us. So. Yeah, that's on the front axle now. So we're just closing it off. We just need to set dampers to where we think it's a good distribution. Spanish at the car, we're ready to rock and roll. Car is finally done. It's all set up. We have achieved negative camber on the rear and a little bit on the front. With Matt's feedback, I do think I will have to change the front wheels though. Because remember, we were running a square setup, which has gave me nothing but problems. But for now, we're going to test it, take it to Dunton and see what it's like. But don't be surprised if I do come back with the original BMW setup, staggered wheels on the rear and, you know, smaller ones on the front. Still 18s, but less wider. So do you want to tell us a little bit about, run, run us through it, Matt? Yeah, what, of course. Yeah. So you've got the KW Club Sport suspension, so they come with yeah. a top mount. Yeah. So they were already in max position. So, so that's why we didn't fit. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we've managed to gain an extra 0.2 degrees just by lowering the car. Okay. It's cambered on a little bit more. Excellent. Um, so we're now at 2.6 on the front, which is quite nice. Excellent. And um, the back end, which is down like 1.3 degrees, which is really limited. Yeah. And that's why it won't have felt very stable at the rear, yeah. especially around the ring, because there's no tire to lean onto through yeah. the mid corner section. Yeah. Um, so with the camber arms fitted, we've now got negative 2.1 back there. So a Excellent. really nice amount of camber to get onto, but also enough in a straight line to still give traction. You haven't gone so far that you're going to lose straight lose, line grip. Straight um, line then, grip. then we've also compensated with that with a bit more towing than you had before. Yeah. So we've increased towing to give that on throttle traction, corner exit hook up, yeah. and just give a lot more grip from the chassis. Uh, we've also tweaked the ride height. So as we mentioned, we'd load the nose and yeah. we've also load the back a bit, but we've load the nose more than the back to give that rake angle into the chassis, to give that nose down attitude. And that's going to help with a front end Because before you were saying it's kind of... It was uphill at the front, yeah, which is like, 
BMWs do not want to drive yeah, like that. Yeah, I mean, in like the that. GT4 cars with Century Motorsport, yeah. they run a huge amount of rake angle. Yeah. They are on slick, so we, we're not running that much, but yeah, yeah, rake angle is the key to getting the BMW chassis to work. Excellent. Um, so yeah, we've set that where we want it, basically. And then we've also done your front tow. So yeah. we've towed out the front axle. So yeah. on a road car, we wouldn't do that. We'd yeah. tow it in for stability and yeah. driving in the rain, all these sorts of things. But for a track car, you want to tow out the front axle on a rear drive car yeah. because it gives front end positivity and it just means that you get initial turning response from the car. So as soon as you turn that wheel, it's going to change direction and get in. And that's what Misha was referring to in that video that he wanted. Now you mentioned something about the arms that I've got in the front. If you watch the yeah. previous videos, so I was supplied the M3 bushes, the solid yes. ones. Yeah. But we need them for the F22, don't that's we? That's right, yeah. So you've got... How can we come around that to gain more... So negative there's, camber. There's two options. So the, the way to get more negative camber is you can buy the F80 M3 slash M4 front control arm pairs. So okay. it's both arms at the bottom on the front. Yeah. You buy those as a pair. So the torsion arms and the other Yeah, ones, so yeah. it's the front the front tension arm and then the rear the front lower control arm. Yeah. And they work together to push the bottom of the wheel out because they're longer okay. than these ones. Yes. Um, so then that gives negative camber, like a fixed anyway, increase. Because yeah. you've got and the top. If I go arms, with the less two. wider wheel it won't touch the shock. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, yeah, okay. you want to go down on wheel because we've got arch clearance issues yeah. and shock clearance. So we're literally hemmed in this gap. And at the minute, it's like this is the only number you can achieve. Otherwise, yeah. you're going to hit the arch or the shock. So does that mean that I will have to get some more solid bushes? Yeah. So the ones that are in there now, yeah. when you press them out, they might not survive okay. the course. So you're better, so I'm better off, off just selling the arms like that. Yeah, I'd say so. Bushes, Sell them yeah. on the bold and then you yeah. want to get some fresh arms in because yeah. the... The, the lower control arm, the middle one, if you like, yeah. on an M3, that is solid bush to standard. Okay. So you don't need to buy one for that, you like you're on the F series. Okay. Um, whereas the front control arm bush, you need a, a monoball for that so one. So we can push that out and put one exactly, in. Is that yeah. something you can supply me with? We make them, yeah. You make them. Yeah, yeah. So there you are, guys. You've heard it. I've had a great day at Suspension Secrets here. Matt and his whole team have been very, very nice with us, and they've treated the M240. If you guys need anything professionally setting up, you'll get these guys coming out and doing it on your drive. Trust me, I've been there, it's not worth it. Use the pros, suspension secrets. I'm gonna put the link in the description. They will be supplying us as well now for our new business, which is coming out soon, where we'll be doing track cars and basically a lot of track builds. So we'll be using suspension secrets along with another few good brands, which we'll, you'll get to hear about that in the future. But yeah, Matt, I just wanna say thank you very much yeah, for doing that to the 240. And I'll let you know how it is in Donington. Awesome, can't wait. Thank you, man. Right. Take care. Cheers. Oh, <laughs>